Why do we want to go to Mars? Why do we want to colonize the moon? Why do we want to create this civilization in the inner solar system? There seems to be a lot of talk about that, but I don't see a lot of kind of backing that you would need to accomplish that. It would cost hundreds of billions of dollars to get out into the solar system, trillions of dollars perhaps to get out into the solar system and establish anything that, that you could begin to call a civilization. And, and that's not happening. That's just not happening. I, I, I get these emails all the time, you know, saying, oh, you know, we have this new idea for colonizing Mars, you know, we have this new kind of habitation process, you know, we'll do it this way, we'll do it that way, we'll have, um, you know, cargo vessels in, in looping orbits between Mars and the Earth, and astronauts can dock there, and they can kind of hide from radiation there, and, you know, all these ideas, and it's like, well, yeah, but the cost of doing that is so much greater than anything you could do with Kickstarter or, you know, a web-based funding thing or conferences. And so there's just a lot of talk that goes on. And for 30 years, we just haven't gone anywhere. And, and so you ask the question, well, why? You know, why have we sort of just sort of stayed in Earth orbit? And it's like, you know, the, the real militant enthusiast saying, well, because we're treasonous, lazy bastards and we don't want to do anything. We don't want to take any risk. You know, what's wrong with you people? You know, there's a whole solar system to explore and you know, get the hell out there and do it. You know, and if you go just go back to the moon, that's even worse. You know, if you stay in Earth orbit, that's terrible. I mean, you know, it's like all this frustration is building up and it's like, God damn it. You know, let's get out there. Let's do it. Let's get get your ass off your, you know, off, off the chair and do something. And I'm thinking to myself, well, okay, you know, I get it. There's some people that really desperately want to get to Mars. and um, But ultimately, it's going to require a national commitment, international commitment. You know, a privately funded thing is just not going to establish um, a civilization on Mars. So, okay, so originally, early on in the space program, we went in deeper into space for, you know, actual solid reasons. Um, there was, the, you know, the whole space race thing, the whole space race thing was real. You know, we, uh, you know, we really felt like, for a while, we in the United States felt like we were behind the Russians. I mean, that, that was not something that went down very well with institutional powers, with the American government, with American people. It just, you know, was really a grating thing. And we're not going to, we're not going to be a second class country. And so our national prestige was at stake, and we were afraid that the Russians could drop nuclear weapons on us, because if you can get something into orbit, well, you know, you can certainly drop a, a nuclear weapon anywhere you want in the world. So, you know, the national security angle, um, and, and so what better way to show that, look, we, we've got our act together, but you know, landing astronauts on the moon, that was it. We, you know, the original... The original charge from Kennedy was not to go explore the moon, not to do science in the moon. It was to get one astronaut on the moon and back to Earth safely. That was it. And the reason it was that that was it, it was like that's all you really needed to do in order to, to solve this national security, national pride, prestige kind of justification. And so saner heads prevailed and said, okay, well, you know, we're going there, we're building all this hardware, we may as well go there a few times, and we may as well bring some scientific instruments, we may as well do some science while we're there. And so science tagged along. Um, and we got really good at doing lunar science until it became like irrelevant to go back to the moon from the, the primary reasons. The primary reasons was national prestige. And after six successful landings, or approaching six successful landings, uh, the Nixon administration just said, look, you know, the only, I mean, the only thing we're going to achieve in the future is a disaster. I mean, something could go really wrong. I mean, we've come really close a few times to some, some really bad things happening. And, and so, you know, the whole national prestige angle and, you know, the, the, the we are better than anybody else angle um, was really, every time they launched those Saturn V, that was another opportunity to screw it up and undermine that argument. And so eventually, it just basically made no sense to take the risk from a political standpoint. 
And so the can, you know, the program was wound down. We said, okay, well, let's we've got some spare hardware. Let's make a Skylab space station. And they sent some astronauts up there, and and then we had a rendezvous mission with the Russians, and you know, like okay, and that was it. <laughs> that was the end of Apollo. And and since then, I mean, we we had the shuttle, and which was a, you know a whole story in itself, but very expensive. And essentially, the idea of the shuttle originally was it was going to be used to construct a space station. It needed a destination, so we built a destination. And you've heard all my videos on the space station, so I won't go there. But, but the point is, is that okay? Well, what, what about Mars? What about everybody's talking about Mars and come back to the moon and and colonizing the inner solar system? And it just sort of fell by the wayside. And what what, what happened? You know what, what happened? And. Um, you know what happened was that we sort of solved the the basic problem. We we proved that we were a spacefaring country, every bit capable of dropping a nuclear weapon anywhere in the world we wanted, and and uh, you know that that national security, national pride itch had been scratched. It was done. We would the country didn't need another Apollo program to prove anything. Um, we were done. And so, but you know, there were some advantages to having an international space station, international cooperation. That's a really cool reason to do a space station. Um, okay, and, and we can learn how to live in space for a while. That's that's an okay, good reason to find out what it takes and you know, to have long duration missions, which would be necessary to go to Mars. But we haven't made a lot of progress towards putting people on Mars. Not really, not really. When, when you list out all the things it would take for people to live permanently on Mars. We have not made a lot of progress. And and that's mainly because we just haven't funded it. It hasn't been a priority. And, and it's So in, in the sort of vacuum of reasons to do it, I hear all these sort of secondary reasons, like, well, we're going to ruin the Earth someday, so we should have people on Mars in case, you know, we wipe out all humanity and, and we can, you know, repopulate the Earth from people that have been living on Mars. or. You know, the sun's going to, in five billion years, it's going to turn into a red giant and incinerate the earth, and we better learn how to get out into space. And, and uh, or, you know, any number of reasons. I mean, Andromeda Galaxy is going to merge with the Milky Way in a couple of billion years. The, the orbit of the, of the moon is going to spiral away and slow down the rotation of the earth, so the days are going to get really long, really long, like 20 times longer. And so where you can live on the earth is going to be greatly diminished. So... I mean, ice ages are going to return. Uh, we could get hit by a comet. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to say that there's going to be downward pressure on population of people on the Earth. But nonetheless, at least in the immediate future, even with you know the largest thing that sneaks through our observations of potential impactors on the Earth, um, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to survive. Uh, it may be a very small p percentage of the total, but... Now, millions of people surviving an, uh, an impact from an asteroid, maybe billions killed, but millions surviving, is still more people than that are likely to be colonizing Mars. Uh, the the place to to you know to keep people safe on Earth is on Earth. I mean, ultimately, and it's again, well, okay, well, what if the Earth got hit by a gigantic comet? You know, like a hundred kilometers in diameter. Okay, well, that would that would. That would melt the crust. Okay, no humans would survive that. But something that big, we would see it coming in five years ahead of time. It, it, it would be big enough to see coming, and we would probably find a way to deflect it. So, you know, the things that would, would potentially, you know, produce a zero population result, wipe out all humanity, um, are just very unlikely. Uh, we're, we're going to find just about everything that, that's, going, that's potentially capable of hitting the Earth. Any t you know, in the next thousand years, I mean, it's just we're in our capabilities are only going to get better. So it's going to come to a point that the Earth is not going to get hit by an asteroid. The Earth is not going to get hit by a big one. Uh, maybe some some smaller ones that we can't see, but that's not going to wipe out a whole population. So the whole argument that that we need to colonize the inner solar system because there's the potential that we could lose all of human population on the Earth is like, well, you know, it's just very unlikely, very unlikely. Um, okay, so what other reasons? And it's like, well, science. 
you know, I'm interested in scientific exploration. And, you know, there is this underlying over, you know, continuing national prestige, prestige thing. We do get a little bit of a bump when we land a rover on Mars or whatever. Okay. But it's not, it's not at the level of funding that, that could put people on Mars. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's like an order of magnitude less of a commitment than the kind of commitment we had for Apollo. And at that level of commitment, yeah, we can land rovers, we can send robots, robotic missions out into deep space. But there's not enough funding to put people on Mars. And so it's like, there's a huge frustration building up. It's like, yeah, these enthusiasts say, we want to go to Mars, we want to land Mars, we want to let people there. Okay, well, I have an idea. We'll, we'll, just, we'll save money by sending like a one-way trip. We'll, we'll land there and we'll forget about coming back. That'll save money, but that's really hard. That's really hard to live on Mars. You've got to build a civilization on Mars. You've got to grow things on Mars. And Mars is a really terrible place to live. It's, it's colder than Antarctica. It's drier than, than any place on Earth. Uh, the air is completely unbreathable. And even if you figured out a way to terraform Mars and increase the air pressure, you're still not going to have an oxygen atmosphere. And, you know, the, the dust is, 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 is toxic and, and, um, it just goes on and on, and it's like it's a terrible place to live. You know, a post-apocalyptic Earth, even the worst, almost the worst you can imagine, is still going to be more inhabitable than a good day on Mars. If the Earth were hit by a major asteroid, even the, the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs, I mean, it, we would see it coming ahead of time, and at least a few thousand people could could um, you know find a place that would be safe from that impact and 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 recover the planet um and it would only take a few years before you know the the fire storm ended and then the 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 ice age ended and the clouds parted and you could you know you could re-inhabit the earth so and it, and if for the amount of money you would spend um colonizing mars you could build an underground city that could that could pretty much stand up to almost anything that that could hit the earth that missed that we missed that we didn't know was coming um, so anyhow i i'm I'm just saying that look look you know there there are reasons why we haven't gone to Mars there are reasons why we haven't gotten back to the moon there are reasons why we haven't spent a lot of money on colonization of the inner solar system because you know the national prestige thing is gone the national security thing is gone um, science is not enough to justify that level of a commitment um, um, there you know the one hope the one reasonable hope that I can imagine is mining of asteroids um, you, know, you run the numbers it's really tough uh, we haven't really prospected them enough we don't really know exactly what they have but in terms of if you're an enthusiast and if you really want to say, I want to get out into space, I want to have human civilization in the inner solar system, well, you're going to have to work on asteroid mining. There, there's really no other thing that could drive us out into the solar system. And that's the sort of thing that drove sailing ships across the Atlantic Ocean from Europe to the Americas. That's what drove you know, wagon trains from the East Coast out to the western parts of the United States. Um, during the you know two centuries ago, um, that's what that's what you know it's that sort of economic incentive. Uh, I think that's the, really the best hope there is, that you know the the ability to potentially, with clever investment, with clever research and development, you, you find a way to kind of pick your way towards making mining the inner solar system profitable. And if you can just make it just barely profitable, okay, that will bring other things along. That will bring the scientific, scientists along. That will bring the colonists along. That will bring, okay, you got to get some sort of initial hook. And national security isn't going to do it. National pride is not going to do it. Uh, capitalism might. Capitalism might. So if you're an enthusiast and you've been like yelling and screaming and writing these tirades and it's like, why doesn't NASA do this? Why don't we do this? Why can't we Kickstarter do this? Why can't we? I want to go to Mars, okay? You got to work on a reason that is big, a really big reason that has you know the potential to bring a lot of wealth, a lot of wealth back to 
uh, whatever the country of origin that you're operating from. And then maybe, okay, maybe you can get some funding. You know, maybe you can get some funding. Maybe it's like, okay, fine, let, let's do it. Let's do it because this might actually break even. We might actually make money. We might, you know, be able to, um, you know, bootstrap ourselves through some sort of a mining operation. Um, the numbers are really hard. You know, just the cost justification numbers are really hard. But in terms of the sort of big motivation, the sort of big motivation that we had, like we had for Apollo, that's really the only one we have left. That's really it. Um, you know, the whole survival of the species thing, you know, there's not going to be any interest in that. I mean, most people aren't going to survive. Most people aren't going to be the elite people that are chosen to survive. So the, the lion's share of population aren't going to really, you know, into this sort of uh, notional idea of humanity surviving. Well, you know, who cares if humanity survives, if, you know, if the asteroid lands on my head. Um, but capitalism, you know, investment, you know, the ability to maybe you know, put money into it and get some money back. I mean, it has worked for other parts of space, you know, geosynchronous uh, comsats, uh, the GPS system, which is government owned, but that, that funds that, that drives a lot of economic activity. Uh, mapping satellites that are able to do prospecting from orbit. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm, there are there are analogs for spending a lot of money on space. And at this point, I would suspect that the only way we're going to get back, get to Mars, get back to the moon, get into the solar system, inhabit the solar system, is that it has some sort of a bootstrapped economic incentive. Um, so, you know, forget about the, you know, the sun turning into a red giant in five billion years. Forget about Andromeda Galaxy merging with the Milky Way in two billion years. Forget about the Earth's day getting really long and plate tectonics is stopping in 500 million years, and all these other silly reasons why I mean, we're worried about the future of the Earth. And that's so far in the future, it's irrelevant. I mean, the whole history of multicellular cellular life on the planet is like 600 million years, the last 600 million years. So, I mean, we're sort of halfway through that window, and we, we've got plenty of time. And we can, we can block and, and deflect just about any asteroid that's going to be coming our way. I'm sure we'll figure it out. If, we, if there's a big ass asteroid heading our way and we know about it 50 years ahead of time, which would be likely, we'll figure it out. Um, so forget about all those reasons for living on Mars. You know, focus in on the the economics and, and focus in on the piggyback science because the science is a way of saying, okay, we're not just doing this for money. We're doing this because it'll help our understanding of the solar system and ultimately our understanding of ourselves. So I've got 18 minutes into this video. It's much longer than I wanted, but it's an important topic. I, you know, it's really worth thinking about. Uh, so think about why you would really want to go to Mars that would really work.